stroke. So stroke can be either ischemic or thromboembolic. So ischemic means there's not blood flow coming to the tissue and without oxygen and nutrients coming to the tissue, that tissue starts to die. An embolic event is where more of a blood clot forms. Many times in heart patients, it's due to atrial fibrillation, a clot forms in their left atria. That clot breaks free, gets lodged in the brain, and you know, steals blood flow from the territory downstream, and that tissue will die unless it's revascularized. Um, so stroke, honestly, is probably more scary to many people because heart attacks, if you survive to get to the cath lab, you usually do pretty well, but a stroke can be debilitating for the rest of your life. But the same risk factors for heart disease are the same things that contribute to stroke in most people. And what are those things? I mean, it's the common ones. It's smoking, it's high blood pressure, it's diabetes, high lipids, physical inactivity. Those are probably the top five, but there may be 395 other things that can really damage your arteries. Do we know, if we take smoking out of it, do we know what would be the biggest contributor of heart disease? It's probably pretty close between um, dyslipidemia and high blood pressure. Um, you know, lipids gets a lot of the headlines, um, you know, because there's a lot of dietary interventions some people can do that make their lipids change. But blood pressure is really that silent killer. You don't feel it often. You know, if you're starting to feel your blood pressure, it's pretty bad. You know, you're usually pretty close to having a stroke or going blind. So it's really called the silent killer for a reason. Your organs are getting pounded with this high pressure for years and just starting to age faster than they should. Hmm. How would someone know that, do you feel heart disease? Generally, no. I mean, the unfortunate fact is that when people have heart attacks, that's often the first symptom that they had heart disease. Um, if you're having chest pain, tightness in your chest with exercise, severe shortness of breath, or exercise intolerance, those are often signs that you're developing severe atherosclerosis in your coronary arteries. Uh, the arteries that provide the nutrients to the heart. But typically, you're not going to have that sensation until your arteries are blocked 70 to 80% with uh